I'm Welcome, everybody, back on Siegel Talks here at the Martin e. Siegel Theater Center at the Graduate Center CUNY. Another day of the week, another Thursday on planet Earth, another day in the, the critical zone, as we learned yesterday from Frederic, the 10 meters above the ground and below the ground that really matters, where we talked about that we have to change our thinking, that like Galileo who taught us that we are no longer in the center of the universe. Um, Darwin, who told us we come from the apes and that now that we have to realize we share a planet, we share it with plants and animals. Uh, we are alive because of it. And uh, what happens affects us. They are actors and they are invisible like the virus. One doesn't even know if it's alive or not. It's some DNA traces, but it has a catastrophic uh, effect uh, on our lives in so many have been talking about this, warning about this, and uh, the Western world, at least, has come to a full stop. The car is still up in the air. We all hope it will land on four wheels, but it can also be a great, uh, a great, great catastrophe, a crash, and nobody knows what's happening. Really, nobody at the moment can look into the future. So we're all in the same boat. We are connected like never before. It's a global crisis. The world has become very small. What happens on a little fish market in China influences us, but also we are in tiny places at home in our apartments, even so we can go out, but we still are connected and we can talk to artists like Iman Aoun from Palestine, who we have here with us today in week 14. We at the Siegel are the only theater institution, as far as we know, who creates new content every day of the week related to Corona and to uh, uh, the crisis we are experiencing. It's a devastating moment for the theater and performance com community. The first one to shut down, the last one to open up. Uh, as many countries said, next to massage salons, because it's work with the body, and we realize that the, our body is that what uh, what rules us. We are reminded about it, and it's a good reminder, but um, it's also um, uncertainty. But artists always have engaged in the uh, right side, as we always say, of, of struggle for the complex freedom as on and liberties, the history of it, on the right side of social justice and they are doing the same again, and we need to listen to them. They also have to contribute now. They show why art is important. No one at home survives without reading, without watching films, perhaps listening or seeing a bit of theater, music. If there ever was a question, why it is essential, it is answered now, but on the other hand, we are non-essential. We are not out. Already New York doesn't have space, doesn't have money. Uh, now there is no space. Now there is no money at all. Everybody is out of work till the end of the year. It's a catastrophe. Do, if you can, do take care of artists, do engage with them, support them there. It's important uh, work, uh, what they contributed over all the centuries, and we have to pay back. Here at the Siegel Talks, we do look at what's happening on the world, but also in theater, that new times, as Battle and Brecht said, need new forms of theater. Theater always has reinvented itself but perhaps accelerated now and forced uh, in a way it hasn't perhaps been in many, many decades or centuries. Uh, mosques, as we know, are closed for the first time in over a thousand years. The uh, pilgrimage to Mecca, where normally 2.5 million people go, it's been closed, only a thousand people will, will be able to come. And we are living through uh, complicated times again. We saw uh, there would be a little opening, a breathing room in the summer but uh, news are not good. The United States had 52,000 infections yesterday, the fifth or sixth day in a row with record numbers, how it had never been, not even in May, because of course there's more testing, but it also shows you know, perhaps just in the beginning, uh, Tokyo, um, Israel, Serbia, uh, South Africa, experiencing big, big spikes. <clears throat> New York City took back the opening of the restaurants of phase three, where they said 50% even could be inside. And they said no all restaurant owners who bought all the foods um, had to take it back. And it's uh, devastating. Iran is still refusing the lockdown. Also record high numbers like Brazil and India. And it is a global uh, catastrophe. And um, we don't know where um, it is going. Um, there's a curious piece of news. Um, Tesla is collaborating with a German company, which I just heard. It's uh, with, <clears throat> um, for Corevac. It's a, a, a small company, a biotech company that is producing a vaccine. The German government 
has uh, invested in. Together with the Grohe Tesla company, they are creating printers, if I understand right, R&D printers. I don't fully understand it. So the shadow DNA, they say, they will have mobile little units that can be deployed in different places fast in the world to print vaccinations in case the right one could be found. I think this is great. Over 100 vaccinations are being tried out, three to 400 uh, remedies uh, for uh, the COVID. Um, unfortunately, it looks like uh, America bought up 90% of the world's reserve for remdesivir. That shows some sign of prolonged, shortening uh, recovery. Um, it costs $5 to uh, produce one of those pills with profit. Um, but the company that developed it, it was already existing will charge between two and 3,000 for each uh, uh, five day um, um, healing process. So um, American taxpayers have to bail out car industry, airplane industries, big, big companies, but the ones who make money are refusing to pitch in and taxpayers, theater workers, actors would have to pay two or $3,000 for that pill in case uh, they get COVID and don't have the insurance. So it's a, a stunning, as Richard Schachner said, it's a nuclear explosion that happens. It's a Fukushima event, but everything is open, uh, like an X-ray, a social political X-ray we see in everything. And uh, of course, uh, <clears throat> we look always at our world, uh, at our families, our neighbors, the next street, maybe the next block, the next city, and we care less and less and less like when you break your leg, if it happens to you, it's bad to your sister, it's terrible. But you know, to someone next door is not so bad and in the next neighborhood, in the next city or another country, but we have to care. And we do care about our global theater community. And with us, we have Iman Aoun today from Palestine. And as thank you, thank you for joining us, Iman. And uh, she's an award-winning actress, a director and dramaturg, and she has a great record on stage and behind the scenes. She, in 91, she co-founded the great um, Ashtar Theater Initiative. And uh, she has been instrumental in directing many, many productions, dramaturging for them. And she is a specialist in Augusto Buell, the great Brazilian theater maker, who we also have to take a closer look again, the theater of the oppressed techniques. For over 30 years, she has acted and worked over, directed over 45 or 50 plays, eight movies and uh, four TV series. So. Um, stuff people like me dream about that I could say that she you did it um so after my long talk and I hope you will forgive me that uh, introduction Iman welcome to Siegel Talks where are you and what time is it <clears throat> well first of all thank you so much for uh, having me uh, this morning uh, this evening for me I am in Jerusalem uh, at uh, my house uh, uh, particularly in Shafat uh, street so uh, and uh, we we are at the moment uh, under the quarantine because uh, for the new wave of uh, the pandemic had started in Palestine and uh, we hit uh, more than 3,000 people uh, who were affected by the pandemic and 11 um, rest their soul were, were dead so um, Therefore, the, uh, uh, the government had uh, imposed the five days uh, quarantine one more time because we spent uh, two and a half months uh, under quarantine, but then they reopened. We went back to work slowly. Um, for some people, they went back on full fledged. So uh, the, um, the amount of, um, uh, of sickness had retaken but more vicious than it was really? before <clears throat> so you for three and a half months you were under lockdown uh, yes uh, well, uh, for two and a half months we two were and a half under months. Lockdown. yes from uh, uh, from march 8 until uh, the end of may um and like a little bit plus a few days in, in June and then everybody went back uh, in June to work and, and now here we are. We're back to uh, quarantine and we don't know what will happen next because uh, as I said before, this wave is, uh, is worse than the wave before it. Uh, and Tell us a little people... bit about it because we heard that Israel wars, at least uh, the, in Israel and in the territories, it was 
quite a successful stories. Uh, Amir, who we talked to, and others said, uh, because of the history of lockdowns and, uh, and uh, <laughs> uh, it, it was followed fast, implemented fast. So tell us a bit. So that's, uh, I was not fully aware of that. In, in fact, in fact, in Palestine, it was very successful because the minute uh, that uh, the, uh, this group that was in Bethlehem from uh, Greece uh, had uh, tested positive, um, the government had shut down uh, the area of Bethlehem. And so they were able to really um, close down the, uh, the threat uh, of the spreading of, uh, of the pandemic. And then uh, slowly we all went into uh, quarantine because there were uh, thousands of uh, workers who work inside Israel from the Palestinian workers. Uh, and it was the time of uh, Ramadan feast. And mm -hmm. then it followed by uh, the uh, the Eid, the uh, iftar. Um, so all the uh, workers were to come back to their homes, and it was then that the um, the amount of uh, of sickness had uh, been elevated because uh, of of the people who were um, living and uh, and working inside Israel. They were um, infected, and and so they brought it back to their families. Um, Going back to, to the issue of, uh, um, of our experience of lockdown, um, of course, we, we are uh, more than one time we had been locked down, but lock, lockdown was always imposed on us. It wasn't our choice. This time it was different because it was uh, our own security, our own health, and the government had chosen to really lock the people uh, down and and everybody was really uh, behaving well with that how did the it problem... feel for you yeah i'm oh, sorry go on mm. so no it's okay um the problem is uh what uh, those who were not able to really um maintain the the lockdown as i said were the workers who were working inside israel and and because israel uh, viciously had put them um, without any um, without any health protection uh, on the uh, checkpoints, literally they they just throw them uh, at the checkpoint, uh, letting them go back to their families uh, without even being checked. Um, in long lines, uh, in close, no social distancing. You mean or no social distancing? But not only. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, they they work uh, with cheap labor. Mm -hmm. They don't have rights they don't have um, uh, um, how do we say um, health uh, health uh, security uh, mm -hmm. they don't follow uh, treatment which they should be following mm -hmm. the treatment inside uh, as well because they are working inside as well but all of that they are not uh, they're not protected so therefore when they came back home uh, some of them were uh, really affected um, and they affected their families and uh, some of them even um, had faced death, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. They maybe also lived together in close quarters and uh, in, in Israel. What are the numbers? How many people are we talking about? For us who do not know as much, uh, how many of those Moment. workers migrate daily or weekly? Oh, the workers, they... Uh, we're, we're talking about uh, 12,000 um, workers who really go and work uh, inside as well. And it really varies from uh, um, one era to another, one period to another, because they are on daily basis as mm -hmm. well. Most of them, they are workers of, uh, of daily uh, work. Um, but uh, as I said, most of them, they do not uh, follow the... Uh, um, the health insurance, they don't have any health insurance from their uh, boss or from the organizations or from the, um, mm -hmm. from the uh, uh, people who really work, mm -hmm. work with them. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yes, where were you? you? You were asking me a question. How did it feel for you to be mm -hmm. under lockdown where you said, yeah, it's a good thing? How, how, tell us a little bit about that feeling or the underlying emotions of you know in the beginning uh, it was a shock for everybody i think all the uh, planet was under a state of shock mm 
uh, from this pandemic. But um, here, um, on a personal basis, uh, because at the last maybe 30 years, I've been so much on the go, so much running around from one place to another, um, traveling a lot, and um, on top of all, spending so much time uh, going from uh, my home in Jerusalem to my work in Ramallah, which is only 10 kilometers, but spending hours on the, on the way because I have to pass three checkpoints. How long is the journey? It, it's supposed to be uh, 20 minutes at, at the most, but then sometimes, uh, well, every day, the minimum is one hour and sometimes it's three hours. It depends on the checkpoint. So it's training, it is time consuming, and it is also devastating uh, psychologically, economically, and emotionally. So, um, so when the uh, quarantine uh, took place, I was really happy for the first time I could relax at home. I could spend time uh, without this um, mad rush to go back and forth uh, every day. Um, so that thing was, was only uh, like the positive aspect of it. Then, of course, we were all perplexed, not knowing um, how to really maneuver, what to do. Every, all our work was stopped. Uh, we had uh, so many productions uh, and tours inside the country and abroad. We were invited to go to Serbia, uh, to Canada, to, uh, to come to New York. Uh, everything was really put, uh, put on hold. Mm -hmm. So when we looked at, at what is happening uh, to us and around us, to the world, mm -hmm. we thought that the best way really to maintain our sanity is to keep our connection with our audience and with the world around us. So we turned into the digital life. We started to really take from our, um, from our back, uh, background plays, from our old uh, productions uh, and put them and stream them live on Facebook uh, and really um, disseminate the, uh, um, the information around us. And what amazed us really is that we gained double our audience hmm. with this. That was really uh, amazing. It was a, a cheering moment rather than, uh, than an, uh, a suppressive one. So uh, we also, I mean, suddenly everybody wanted to talk to everybody uh, via Zoom or uh, Skype or Messenger, whatever. So we found ourselves, I found myself daily in front of, uh, of my computer talking to more people than I ever do in real, real life before the pandemic, which also had uh, raised certain questions in, into my mind, is that are we really uh, going into a phase where we will be slowly um, getting rid of our real connections with the world? I think this question had everybody had asked themselves. Um, it is quite interesting, charming, to be able to really connect to the people that you know um, so easily to make um, to make meetings uh, that were so much draining and, and taking time to to bring everybody together or conferences to bring everybody together on a click on your computer here you are everybody is there and you could see everyone and you could really make your work happen. What is not good is that this rapport with the audience, with the people, with, with our colleagues, uh, with our, um, with our uh, friends, 
is different now. Had been, um, how, do, how can I call it? Uh, lost the empathy. Because when you breathe together, when you really see a play, when you cheer um, an actor, this energy inside the rehearsing room or inside the, uh, inside the performance room or um, it, it's different. It means the world. No matter how far and wide we could really reach through our devices, we cannot really reach this moment. This empathy, this energy, this breath, this heat that makes the whole encounter humane. Um, yeah, yeah, well, um, on the other hand, during the pandemic, um, what we did is um, my husband, colleague, uh, and lifelong partner, um, Edward Malem, uh, he was able to write uh, three books, bringing all the plays of uh, Ashtar Theatre, uh, whether the professional plays that we have done with um, the Theatre of the Oppressed, uh, or the, uh, the plays that we have um, worked with our um, community groups and produced in two uh, in, in a book of two chapters and he also gathered the place of uh, Al Hakawati Theatre Company the company that we uh, we descended from um, all the early uh, about four plays of the early times from uh, uh, 78 until uh, uh, until 82 uh, 84. He brought them all together in, in one book as well. So uh, that was also another push, another um, experience that was worthwhile in, uh, in our life under the, uh, the quarantine. Yeah. So in the way of a life was checkpoint, that means six checkpoints a day when you went back and forth and hours waiting, wars and things. So there's the corona in a way gave you breathing room. So it's a very different, you know, for, for the kind of the Western world that experiences perhaps for the first time, the uncertainty, the not knowing. Um, and uh, so it's a beautiful moment. It's also sad to know that it has to happen like this for you to experience such a moment. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, especially, especially because, uh, I mean, for, for those, for many friends out there who know a little bit more about Palestine and, and those who do not know about Palestine, um, to be an actor is not taken for granted. Either. To be, to work in, uh, in art, it's not something that is very easy. It's not easy anywhere in the world, but it's not easy, probably double uh, here, because we also have to face uh, not only the, uh, the occupation, which is a big stone on, on our shoulders, but it's also, we have to face uh, social uh, norms because um, it's not easy for uh, the society um, to accept, especially, for women to be uh, part of, of the theater world. Not everywhere. Um, women are much more uh, involved at, at, these, at, the, at our time, but it was a difficult path to reach there. Uh, when we started um, back in the 77 um, with the Hakawati company, there was only maybe three, four um, female actresses. Later, when we started Ashtar in 91, there were maybe uh, 10 actresses. Uh, we had to work so hard in order to convince families, uh, schools, 
the society in general that this profession is a decent one. Um, we had to convince the society that uh, theater is a message. It's a political and social message. We have to uh, really uh, implant the, um, the importance of uh, performing arts in our society uh, over and over again. Every step that uh, the community of performing arts had taken, it wasn't an easy step. It, it needed a lot to really uh, establish um, roots and to establish uh, a, a real, uh, like um, a, a cemented ground to stand on. Uh, nowadays, we have actresses. We have many actresses in Palestine, but not in all, all, uh, all the cities. In certain areas, more than others. You, you see that uh, in the middle, in Jerusalem, in Ramallah, in Bethlehem, um, there are more actresses, but less actresses when you go out in remote areas. Um, we try to, uh, to train um, different groups, different uh, youth groups, women and men. Um, we try to encourage them to continue. They do continue, they, they train, they work for one year, two years, but then the problem is also connected to the economy because it's a weak economical uh, segment. Um, as you were saying in your introduction in the beginning, all actors in, in New York are facing dire situation uh, at the moment. So they do in, uh, in Palestine. And because- On a regular also, basis, without the virus already. Without it, of course. But now more, because we do not have uh, a government that believes really uh, they, the, in what we are doing, in the importance of our uh, being. They praise the fact that we have theaters, we have dakke groups, uh, traditional uh, dance groups, um, we have cinema, we have, but then when it comes to, uh, to real support on the ground, there are no budgets. There is no support, real support. There are no laws that protect us but what we are doing we i mean organizations that have been there even before the oslo agreement that brought the palestinian authority uh, into palestine um, our organizations were there uh, and were really um, struggling but but also imposing uh, and, and creating uh, culture to the people. We will continue to do that. We will never go uh, away. We will not disappear with the money or without the money. We will stay. But what we want is recognition. What we deserve is more support. Um, even though they do recognize us on, on the uh, modern level, let's say, but we want more from them. Mm -hmm. But of course, saying all of this, we have to keep in mind that the, even the Palestinian Authority and our government is under occupation. The whole country is under occupation. Nowadays, our workers do not have uh, money. All, all the authority does not have a penny because they have stopped the uh, cooperation with the Israelis due to uh, the Israeli um, plan to annex the Jordan Valley. And so uh, the authority is, is facing um, economical uh, disaster at the moment. And so had been this, uh, this way over and over. Every, uh, every few years, there's something else. Today, it's the Jordan Valley. Before, it was uh, Gaza. 
uh, before it, it was something else. So it's always, there are always excuses that Israel creates on the ground in order to jeopardize the position of uh, the, uh, uh, the Palestinians, whether it be the Palestinian Authority or even the people um, altogether. And the, pro the, the, the main frustration for us is the, um, the weak and sometimes even the total silence of the world and the surmounting um, um, support of the US to Israel. Because for us, they are two coins, or two, two faces of the same coin. Colonization, it had not vanished. <laughs> so we're still living the mentality of the colonial. Um, the white supremacy is still undermining everyone in the third world whether it be on um, actual occupation or if it is on economical occupation or it, when, it, when it is sanctions imposed on countries like Iran, for example, like Syria, like Lebanon. It's crazy. The world is in a crazy position and it's our duty our duty the artists to really keep at least small bubbles here and there for pure breath for the people but it's also our duty to have the pin like in the old days as jokers and really, um, really push this big balloon in order to burst it out. So we have a, a big duty, but um, but sometimes sometimes we feel ourselves alone, especially when it comes to political uh, solidarity. Um, and I should say that maybe this pandemic had brought something also good on the table because suddenly the whole world started to feel that we are all connected. So what is happening in Palestine is affecting the people who are in New York or in um, Brisbane, or in UK, etc. And we, we see more people in solidarity with us. But the problem is, we, are, we do not have the power that, that those in power have. Because we own the world. We own the words, we, we own our body, but we do not own um, the material. We do not own machine guns. And we know who governs the world. Those who make the war, factories of alterally, those who run it, politicians, and the media who really connects this triangle. So, well, you can ask me questions. <laughs> no, 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 it's, um, well, as you say, that what some people say, the world follows the golden rule and that is who has the gold rules, right? And, um, it shouldn't be like this. It's not in the interest of mankind. It's not in the interest of a social 
progressive justice and it will not make the world a better place. And um, how, how does it feel to be an artist in Palestine? How do you, how, what's, how is it connected to the society, to, to cities, this theater? Uh, since, we, since we started uh, our program in 91, the whole idea for us was to really uh, a to give um, a new aspiration for our youth. That's why when we started, it it was um, a horizontal project. We started in Jerusalem because we live in Jerusalem, but then very soon it it, it went in, into Gaza. Bethlehem, Ramallah, Birze, and so the project was really uh, going horizontal uh, in Palestine, and we started to train our youth. But then, then we also like after the first three years, we um, and with the graduation of the first uh, um, the first group of our students, we felt that it's worthwhile to continue with them and, and grow even wider. Um, it was in 91 and 93, it was uh, the return of, of the authority or of the PLO into Palestine after Oslo agreement. So, um, and it was a time when, um, when we were not able at all to find even a small space in Jerusalem to rent because Palestinians were banned from, um, from owning land or from um, building on it. There were no permission for that. So space were completely uh, closed in front of us, which made us go in 95 to Ramallah and we rented a space that became our studio. And from there, we continued to work in, uh, in the different places. And of course, uh, it, it was after the, uh, the Goldstein massacre at the, uh, at the Ibrahimi uh, mosque, that 700, 740, uh, even 740 checkpoints were imposed on the territory of the West Bank. To protect whom? They killed us and then they want to protect themselves. Okay, now, um, this had made us think of an alternative program in addition to our, uh, to our theater school, which is the theater of the oppressed. So we introduced the theater of the press technique because people were not able to move from one area to another, from one village sometimes to the city next door. So by introducing and adapting uh, this form, we started to do forum plays and we started to, to go to the people where they are. Maybe say a few words about uh... Well, and theater of the oppressed, I'm sure not everybody who listens to us knows they should, but they, not everybody mm. does. Of course. Uh, well, great Augusto Boal, uh, our teacher and master uh, who uh, belated uh, Boal, um, had, um, had really developed uh, with his uh, troupe, uh, the CTO in Brazil, um, this form of theater that is called theater of the oppressed that is based mainly on highlighting the problems of the people by the people and um, indicating uh, the uh, um, and uh, yeah indicating the problem and keeping the prob the problem accentuated alive on the stage and opening up the performance to the audience to intervene and to become, instead of becoming 
instead of being passive uh, recipients, passive audience, becoming active spec actors, which means that they become actors on the stage um, at the second round of the uh, performance. The main idea of the forum is to really open up the debate, give space to the audience to think and become active beings in their society. And also to testify ideas of change, to become change makers, not only by verbal or thinking about it, but also in acting it out in order, in order to realize whether, uh, whether change is possible or not possible because we think that change might be a, a, a very simple uh, aspect, but in fact, change is very difficult on the ground. And that's why the world is not really in a, in a good situation. So, um, so by, um, by adapting the forum theater and the different, uh, the different aspects of theater of the oppressed, because the theater of the oppressed has a tree of different um, methodologies. One of them is um, image theater. Forum theater is at the heart of it. The, the way uh, the way we open up uh, the uh, um, the performance to the audience to interact. Um, but there is the um, newspaper uh, theater, the legislative theater, which really tackles uh, in legislative or laws uh, that. Uh, concern um, a, a, a city or a country, and then how the, the people could really um, create um, a collective in order to change mm -hmm. that legislation. Did, did it work? Did it work for you? I mean, let's, you adapted it, but did you, did you find new forms or did, did it work? It did work in, in different ways in many times. Uh, the way we work uh, with the theater of the oppressed, uh, we, usually, we usually go into uh, the community. Uh, we make a research. It, first, we really, uh, like, uh, we put the target. We put uh, an, uh, a topic that we want to, uh, um, to target. And then we start our research in, in our community. Uh, we meet the people, we read about the issue, uh, we look at the, at the organizations who work upon this issue uh, on the ground. Uh, we try to see what, what the problem in depth is. And then we bring all the information back uh, to the theater and we start to create uh, the play. Um, after we do the performance, we take the performance back to the audience, to the community, and we perform it to them. And we encourage them, of course, to think of different uh, solutions. Then we open up uh, that these discussions. We take uh, those discussions from the audience uh, and we perform to decision makers. We try to, to go to key people who, are, uh, who can really make the change uh, on the ground. We perform the play and we try to lobby for the sake of the community. So whether it worked, it worked uh, in one of the cases we, we were um, working with the different women's organizations to raise the uh, marriage age because uh, at a moment we had uh, the marriage age uh, 14 uh, or around 14 it was between 14 and 15 because when we look at uh, at age uh, history or um, the, the islamic age or uh, the uh, christian age so, uh, and that was a big problem for many, um, for many young girls who were wed at early age. So uh, we went into um, a project together with uh, different women's organizations and we put uh, a, um, 
uh, a proposal for uh, the uh, uh, for the uh, for Abu Mazen for uh, for the head of the country because uh, because the legislation uh, the legislative uh, um, body body committee yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> were were not functioning uh, since two thousand and five. Uh, when the world had uh, uh, had really pushed uh, Hamas into Gaza, and um, so the whole um, the whole country stopped functioning uh, the right way. So uh, all what we were able to do is to really go to the president every time we want uh, a new law to be uh, issued, we go to the president. And so the president really uh, had looked into that in, with, with very thorough uh, eye and wanted to change this law. But then it was only a proposition. It's not, it's, it's not really a law any, at the moment because the, the legislative uh, body is not, is not there. Um, on a different uh, level, other uh, stories um, that were also uh, going into lobbying towards uh, towards some uh, issues or big topics. We were working at the Jordan Valley with community groups, and um, at the Jordan Valley, and, and this is very important for our audience to really understand the this um, this particular land that Israel wants to, uh, to annex is something like 300 kilometers uh, length uh, and um, five kilometers width. And it's supposed to be, or it used to be, the most fertile land where all our um, vegetables and, and fruits came from. But over the years, what Israel occupation had done they have really uh, put this Jordan Valley uh, uh, under dire conditions and they have stolen all the water because there are um, big reservoirs of water under the Jordan Valley. One third of our water comes from there. Um, so what they do, they forbid Palestinians to dig wells. So if they give a permission, the only possibility in your land to dig a well is for 10 meters. Next door to you, there will be, or there is um, a settlement, um, a colony. They dig 40 meters. So all the water, goes to that well and your well is quite empty so what happened to the uh, to the soil it became salty and unfertile the people became um, more and more uh, poorer and poorer because they are uh, peasants this is how uh, what what they live on and then they closed all the frontiers for uh, for any um, um, trade in the vegetables. So the Jordan Valley at the moment is really um, facing so much, uh, um, like so much uh, problems, so much attacks from different, uh, from different parts. One of them is also uh, the Israeli occupation in the summer, they go and do um, and do uh, life training inside the villages, using life ammunitions. Many while people live there while people are living, so they put them out uh, under the sun for hours, and without sometimes without water, without food, and they have to leave their homes because they the Israeli occupation uh, soldiers are, are training. Many of them 
We can't hear you at the moment. Um, maybe you could you say again, we just lost you. Uh, so you said there are, um, uh, the, while they have to be outside without food and water. Yeah. Yes, I said that they put them outside in, uh, under the sun without food or water. And they use life ammunition in their training. Some of the, uh, of the people were injured badly and some were even killed. But uh, there's total silence from the world towards that. And, and um, this is continuing. And at the moment, of course, they want to take uh, this part of, uh, of our land, of the West Bank, um, because it's a fertile zone for them. Although what do you think as a theater maker of that uh, Trump-Israeli proposal to annex? What, is, what are your thoughts? I think that um, it's not Trump, <laughs> if I say. It's not the person. It's the system. It's the cooperation of the American uh, politics. It is IPAC who runs uh, the politics in, uh, in the US. And if it is not Trump, it will be uh, X or Y or Z. It doesn't matter the name, it doesn't matter the person. The problem is that uh, there is not enough um, will to change the political um, image or the political will inside the, uh, the US. We were hoping that Sanders would, uh, would continue his, uh, his campaign and would be the next president. But look what happened, because uh, even the Democrats would not allow someone uh, who has a different point of view to really run, run the state. Um, so, um, so, yeah, I, I think that um, as a theater maker, I, one of my uh, continuous role is is really to um, to raise such issues to really present uh, our life on the stage uh, to uh, encourage our youth to continue and uh, and despite the despair to create active and proactive uh, uh, hope uh, not to wait, but to be uh, with a vision and with a mission uh, in their life. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should put on my put on uh, a little bit light. of light. I think light is going down, right? Just, in, just uh, to say yes, because in Jerusalem, it's uh, yes. It's just give me one down. second. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, that's what Goethe said of some of his last words. As far as we know, he said, "We do need more light." And uh, here we go. Yes, yeah, yeah, thank you. It happened fast uh, uh, when the sun happened fast that the sun went down. Different time zone, that's why. Yeah, thinking. yeah, yeah. No, these are uh, devastating, um, devastating moments for a country and also for artists and, uh, and, um, and one doesn't really have a feeling that there are solutions that are thinkable that would create, a, create as you said, a change. What, what, why do you do theater then? What, what's your hope in, in, um, in this complex situation? I do theater because I believe that uh, theater is the breath that I, that I have. It, it is the only um, the only way to keep me alive. Because if I don't do theater, um, I'll go nuts. Um, too many uh, and too much frustration about around not only in Palestine in the world. Um, but sometimes I say, if I were not a theater maker, I probably would like to be a politician. But I hate politics and politicians <laughs> but I think that um, I think that uh, I have a role uh, as an artist to really uh, keep the, the 
um, how do you say it's like uh, like the uh, the Joker again in, uh, in in the medieval time who will tell uh, the uh, the king that he is wrong so that's why I'm a Joker and I believe that this is the most important role that I have um, I always point my finger I always use my pen um, towards what is wrong um, and also be maybe because I feel that um, the theater really and art in general uh, makes us more humane if we if we are not using art in our life our life is so dull I mean look during the, this pandemic, the, the best outcome of it was um, the performances that everybody was, uh, was putting on uh, YouTube, on Facebook. And, uh, so art is an important aspect in our life, which sometimes we feel that, uh, um, we feel how important they are when we miss them or when we are mostly in need of them. Um, I started doing theater when I was a child at school. The first time I was on stage, it was uh, a play, uh, it, it was called The Good Samurai, or The, uh, the Good Samari, Samarian. Samaritan. From, mm -hmm. Samaritan from the Bible. Samir al-Rahim in Arabic. And it was a pantomime. Um, and I was uh, the Good Samaritan at the time. This, um, this feeling of being under the spotlight, this feeling of having uh, the world as a stage for you, for you as an actor to stand there and to say what you want. Nothing can be compared with. It's from that moment that I got married to the theater and I hope I would not divorce it ever. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a moment, it's strange. We spent so many years and school you know and we forgot so much but we never forget when we were in a play when mm. we were part of a performance it left an impression made us look see things differently and that is not just us it's for everybody in the world and this is why we need it and why why we need to have it as, as you said it changed your life maybe it, your teacher wouldn't have put up that play you would be most probably Ben would be someone else. So um, the time we live in of Corona, of Zoom, is it changing the way you now uh, will be working in theater? Even let's say we have a time after Corona, the TAC as I call it, um, but um, will there be a change to the state of the oppressed and Zoom and going outside? Are you thinking of different possibilities now, which we haven't thought before. Mm. In fact, uh, we are at Ashtar, at, at the theater. Um, we're thinking of uh, uh, like, oh, let me put it this way. <laughs> We've been uh, working with the uh, theaters, with students at universities using uh, forum theater in order to um, train them and, and really tackle the issue of emancipatory education. But since the uh, pandemic erupted, uh, we're not able really to, to work with our students face to face. We used Zoom and um, we discovered that, well, it, it works, but it doesn't work the best way sometimes to train via Zoom. But what could work is a live performance. So at the moment, we are thinking of doing a forum, a live forum performance. 
So we're, we're developing our skills in order to create a possibility for the audience to interact with us in the forum while performing. So an Augusto Boal idea of the forum online based on your history with theater training with people on chat rooms. So it's an, an updated version yes. or using a, a new technology for a traditional old form, which creates something new. And uh... That's the hope, because if, if this continues like this, we cannot really, uh, um, we cannot really wait until uh, we, we find the vaccine and life goes back to normal. What is normal? But <laughs> yes, I, I think I think the world is really going into uh, a new stage, a new, a different uh, age. The age of uh, uh, of the digital at the moment, and so we have to uh, to be part of that world as well because uh, um, we need our audience, and our audience need, need us. Yeah, maybe in 100, 200 years when mankind will look back at this moment, it is the moment when the world really went online. We all thought uh, cyberspace is not real, but now it's one of the few real spaces where we can meet for real um, 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 someone. Um, what do you detect also, you know, from, uh, I don't know how we are in contact with, you know, Arab uh, countries, with their colleagues and friends in Israel, whatever. Do, do, you, do you see things online where you say that makes sense and that's interesting, that's inspiring? Have you seen something that was that the next, next to, yet, of course, the screening of archival material? Is there something where you say, this has a potential, that was interesting? Hmm. Uh, I've seen things different things in fact i've seen things from uh, germany from uk uh, very little from the arab world that i have seen and not many people i've seen from uh, palestinians uh, i mean many uh, plays that i ha didn't have the chance to see them uh, i mean from my colleagues of different years uh, I was able to follow and I was really happy to uh, to be able to see them um, but uh, I've seen from uh, uh, from Shakespeare company I, I've seen different things I've, uh, but um, uh, but maybe uh, one thing also that that uh, interested me is um, an experience that was done in the forum theater training uh, online that um, that David Diamond uh, from La Mama shared with me. So, because um, I'm supposed to, uh, next week to train a group of uh, uh, of people and using theater of the oppressed, and it, it's not an easy uh, matter really to train um, different people at the same time when they are not. Uh, in the same room, um, but um, I mean, one thing that that I uh, uh, I want to say that uh, the Globe uh, Shakespeare Globe, for example, uh, we received yesterday a letter uh, from uh, from them um, from Terry saying that uh, they will be performing all the performances that were in 2012 the Globe to Globe. And our Richard II will be also uh, performed on their uh, on their platform on their website, so uh, on YouTube link, um, which is great. So uh, this is another way also uh, of reaching out um, to more audience internationally. Um, hopefully, that uh, this would help uh, the continuation because as I said before in the beginning, that we were invited to different uh, uh, theater festivals this year. Unfortunately, all of them uh, were stopped. Even our international youth festival that was supposed to be uh, now, uh, July 10 to 20, uh, was postponed until next year. And we had 18 performances from around the world. 18? Um, yes. Yeah, and you also had it on HowlRound, like last year, right? It was uh, also shown. Yes, HowlRound is doing a great job. And 
absolutely how, how Ron uh, had uh, followed our festival last year and uh, they they were really streaming it uh, live mm -hmm. whenever we were performing which is great so, yeah since we have i think international list listeners sometimes we have them even from 35 countries i don't know how many we will have today but what do you need if you say we felt left alone perhaps the world isn't paying attention and we all show it to everybody to individual experiences but also to political uh, situations to systems and structures as you pointed out that are so wrong forms that don't work what would help you what we would say to the world or, you know that would be do do this for us or what would what would be of uh, use mm. um well i think if if i want to ask uh, what i need from the theater uh, world more than the world uh, in general because there mm -hmm. are many things that yes. we need from different parts uh, but from theater makers one uh, is that um, for example uh, we are not being um, presented uh, enough in theater festivals around the world main theater festivals where we are presented mainly in the off uh, theaters not those the big ones because they don't know of uh, of our work because they don't come and see our work because uh, it, it interested um, or um, artistic directors um, they don't really travel to our part of the world to come yeah. and and follow uh, so this is important i believe that in order to uh, to really um, raise the awareness of the people of uh, of our culture uh, that is one one of the things that that should be done um another thing is more co-productions between between uh, international companies uh, and palestinian companies um, um, it's great that um, for instance um, the the performance of uh, of nizar was uh, uh, was in uh, New York. Um, it, it's great that our performance, Richard II, was at the Globe. Uh, but there are more companies. Uh, we we have new plays <laughs> that are worth uh, seeing. Mm -hmm. So th there's always new things happening. Uh, more things uh, possible. More joint forces uh, possible to to really raise the awareness from one side uh, and not only the awareness of the political issue but also of our um, artistic artistry of our ability as artists um, and on the other hand i think uh, solidarity is an important aspect um, solidarity with us as palestinians and not in connection to if you want to um, uh, to make any production with us, you have to also make uh, a joint production with the Israelis. We exist autonomously. We are uh, the owners of uh, of this land. We are the indigenous people of uh, of Palestine. We deserve to be looked at uh, as uh, a whole uh, entity with uh, deep culture. Um, yeah. If I want to ask uh, politicians, I don't think that this is the, <laughs> the yeah, platform yeah. to do that. No, but still, I think this is important what you're saying, you know, to be invited uh, to make co-productions, maybe also that significant theater companies and directors from the Nushkin and Ostermeyers and uh, the great French directors and others so that they come and uh, participate and also do work in your place. And um, if, to do something with nothing, as you say, to experience a completely different set, you know, often an experience, how to create something and to really think what's essential as we are forced now to, to experience um, this, um, this truly unprecedented moment where we are in a way also in the same boat with you, even so your life and your own experience of this is so radically, radically different and uh, we, most probably are not able really to understand the experience 
you go through every day, every week, every year, every decade you know, of your 30 years plus work of, uh, in theater. But it gives us perhaps an idea for the idea of it. What do you, what inspires you at the moment? What do you read? What do you listen to? Is there something that nourishes you that uh, keeps mm. your knife sharp? If people say, you know, you should do reading because it's like sharpening a knife. You should be, keep your mind clear. What do you do? But uh, yeah, if you allow okay, me yeah. to, mm, if course. you allow me just to talk about a little bit about Gaza, uh, mm -hmm. about uh, this closure and, and the mm -hmm. feeling of the closure mm -hmm. and to connect it to, uh, to the fact that, uh, that Gaza had been under siege for the last um, 12 years now. Can you imagine um, 2 million people are living in 15 kilometers um, sieged in, in, in the biggest prison on, uh, uh, on earth at the, at the moment. They're not able to leave. People are uh, really stuck inside with uh, very little uh, possibilities of jobs and uh, of, uh, of life, but they are doing theater, mm. they're doing culture, which is great and important. And maybe uh, going uh, also um, viral and going uh, digital is an important aspect. Maybe, uh, maybe how around um, would be hosting someone from Gaza soon. Mm -hmm. That would be a, a good be idea yeah. uh, to, yeah. to listen to the people there and what they yeah. need to say. Um, but uh, what is in inspiring me at the moment, um, um, well, uh, at the moment I'm, I'm really uh, trying to, uh, to read novels uh, and listen to classical music. What novels do you read? Um, there is a there is a novel uh, of uh, it's called uh, Amir Hadar Alam, uh, the Prince of this World, by a Russian uh, writer um, uh, Mikhailov. Mikhailov. Um, mm -hmm. um, it's interesting because it really talks about uh, uh, the uh, medievals and the time of. Uh, uh, it's like a, it's like uh, a research into the medieval um, uh, period. Mm -hmm. Period, but also um, what's the word? Behaviors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, maybe, maybe, uh, well. I have to admit that uh, I haven't been reading a lot uh, apart from the novels. I, I read like five, six novels during the pandemic. Most of them are, uh, are in Arabic, uh, but I'm watching Sherlock Holmes on <laughs> and reading the book. So trying to, to really see um, the, uh, the difference in, in the writing. Um, which is interesting. I think Netflix had been um, number one in uh, during this pandemic of how many mm -hmm. people had been uh, had been seeing um, films at the moment, um, and I'm really trying to uh, think for the future of uh, of our work, um, how to really go digital in most of our work. So this is mostly uh, the, uh, the focus that, uh, yeah. that I'm doing at the moment. Um, fundraising as well. Fundraising, fundraising, fund which is a big and, and draining aspect, especially uh, that the, the funds are uh, also um, becoming uh, connected to politics more and more. They were always like this, but now, um, I don't know whether you have heard uh, or the audience have heard of, of the new political conditions that the EU have, uh, uh, have imposed on us as Palestinians. Because if we, the EU had been one of the major um, supporter. funder, supporter, 
for the Palestinian civil society. And now, uh, in order to take the money, we have to uh, condemn uh, the struggle of our political parties. We have, because they have really uh, put them under uh, the list of terrorism, which is devastating. Because even international law had secured our right to resist the occupation. And when someone like uh, the EU impose such uh, a clause in their contract, you take the money or you, den you denounce your rights that is against international law. And there is a big fight at the moment, that there's a big struggle, let's say, at the moment inside uh, the society um, to really, to, uh, to find measures of opposing uh, that act from the EU and try, trying to really stop it. Um, mm. And not only the EU, there are new and more um, countries that are following the, this EU um, action, which is putting us in, into the corner, um, reducing the very little money that comes into Palestine and, that, and the, the real uh, bits and pieces that come to culture. Yeah, now it's, uh, yeah, it's a big, big reminder, you know, also from people in Berlin or New York who think already life is tough, downtown theater, you know, but trying to survive, try to work in your place uh, where you do the work and uh, theater is on the site of life. Yeah, someone like you who is fighting for justice, social justice, for understanding of, um, of all sides of uh, 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 aspects of human existence. You've been thrown into that. Palestinians have been thrown into with their lives in that place where they happen to be born. It's a, a devastating and people don't know, um, someone said it might be a Chekhovian ending or a Shakespearean, Chekhovian where everybody's unhappy for centuries or a Shakespearean is a bloody killings and we don't really know. And we of course hope that um, art in the very long run and it might take a very, very long time but there will be uh, solutions. Um, France and Germany were the biggest enemy on planet earth. They somehow made friends, Ireland, uh, came uh, came to terms but it took you know centuries and it took a good while and mm -hmm. a lot of people like you who who were on the side of uh, struggle for liberties and understanding and and many people in all the in all the states have um, have uh, um, contributed to it and uh, i am sorry that you're also between the fronts in a way between the western world and the in the palestinian world between uh, your own uh, the government or as a woman you try to fight for rights and then against Israel so it's so complex and there is no black and white no right no right wrong and uh, everybody who says it is lying and um, that's why we do need theater to show the complexities and perhaps also without a solution but we have to show what is uh, um, how the world is and not how we would like it to, uh, to see so you're doing a great great uh, contribution there it's a heroic efforts as so many theater people we talked about in Lebanon and Chile and Brazil and uh, in the US people under difficult circumstances, you know, really using the arts uh, for um, an expression uh, of, of mankind. And as you pointed out, it is now uh, the time where we see how significant it really is that so much of what theater represents, represents life itself, the gathering, the joining, friends meeting, getting dressed to go with the show, talk about it whether you like it or not, like in a soccer game, not every game is a great one. Once in a while you see, but you do go, you are passionate and uh, it represents the very best. And this is what we miss most and theater is um, at the center of it. Thank you for giving an update. And of course it could be much longer every day. And, uh, and I apologize that the time is short, but it gives us a, a, a moment and it contributes to the mosaic of that global experience of the pandemic by theater um, and performance artists. We are a community, we care for each other. Your work is important and you're not alone there. And um, and I also from our talk we had with Joshua Sabol and uh, 
and the other uh, Israeli playwrights, you know, their, their concerns, uh, you know, are very real and, uh, uh, and for that place. And it's just a helplessness, but I think we, we uh, um, have to um, find ways at least to uh, represent in a symbolic, imaginary and real way um, how change can happen and it is of utmost significance. So really, really thank you for, um, um, for, uh, for, for having, uh, spending time with us. And I hope you um, will um, follow uh, some of the series. And again, you know, what you said for this theater um, series, uh, uh, listeners and your artists, think about how to, how to connect, how to reach out and um, maybe give a sign of, of support and inviting and, uh, and also maybe suggest on getting involved. Don't stand by, don't sit at the sidelines, uh, take action. This is what this is all about and what you do, getting involved in your community, trying to change laws, do it in your own world. Um, tomorrow we go on and we have uh, uh, Sakina Dia and Ivone Walters from Jamaica, English speaking uh, Caribbean artists uh, also experience a, a tough time in Jamaica with the complex history, the history of slavery and colonialism and a uh, complex uh, a relation to, um, to their language, to their history, and also the fear, the feeling that perhaps someone is not thinks about enough about it. They are forgotten and not being paid enough attention to. So it's a very significant talk we're also gonna have tomorrow. Iman, anything you want to say? What, what should young artists, what should people think about? What should they be doing? You, from your experience of over 30 years making theater, mm. complicated um, circumstances, and we are experiencing them now, what, what advice do you have? Well, uh, first I wanted to yeah. say that we, the situation is Kafkaian. Kaf, Kafka, Kafkaesque. Uh, Kaf, Kaf, Kafkaesque. Uh, because uh, it's really absurd what, what we are living at the moment. But, but uh, what I wanted to say uh, about uh, young people uh, and maybe before the young people, I also want to salute uh, all the Native American uh, actors and actresses, uh, my dear friends who I worked with them uh, in New York uh, in last May. Um, but uh, also I uh, really want to say that uh, indigenous artists are important artists for this world. Yeah. We really have to uh, um, um, work together. We really have to uh, join, join our efforts uh, and um, the, the uh, wh white male, mainly um, artists uh, who sit uh, on top of, uh, of the business, they really have to uh, look with equal eye to us because uh, they're there because of the colonizer and we're here because of the colonization. Um, it is time to really make it a horizontal um, um, situation and cooperation. Um, no one is better than the other. Although they are sitting uh, in their parish, but, um, but we have uh, we have the soul, we have the energy, and we have uh, the continuation of this land, the connection of this land. And this is also uh, what I want to say uh, to the young people. Um, my um, students, uh, the young people in Palestine, but also around the world, um, that, it, that they have a responsibility. Each individual artist, has a big responsibility to make this world a better place for all of us, not only for themselves, but for all of us. So um, I think, I think I would stop here. <laughs> no, that's a big, very big reminder. And um, you're absolutely right. People also like me, people who are in the positions, you know, we never even questioned how we get there my others are not there and um, there isn't a Palestinian and African American or others you know doing the work I do and um, and there are reasons I'm, I'm for it and we have to listen we had a great session with spider woman it was very important what they had to say also now Native Americans who hit so hard they are the ones that my son-in-law a company member 
two friend, people have died from the coronavirus. They're much more affected. We're going to have Emily Monet and Greg Hill from the Canadian Native American Indigenous uh, community. They will be with us next uh, next week. And I think this is a time, if there is anything good, at yes, we will. We do listen perhaps a little bit more closer, and we do think a bit more careful about our lives and what life is about and what's the significance and to create a place for the next generation that is better than we found it and uh, when we were young or better than, uh, we should be better than what we have contributed. And we should listen uh, also you know, to those young people who are protesting and, uh, and seeing this moment of real change. So again, thank you. Um, thank you so much uh, to our thank listeners uh, for taking time. It's, I know it's a long time, but it's important for Iman to know that people do listen, people do care, that it is on our minds even, so we might not have immediate solutions, even that that might take a lot of time and 25 missions fail, but the 26 might work out. And to really keep in mind that we are fellow humans um, here on this planet Earth and that we depend on uh, coexisting, but also with the animals and plants world and everything and, uh, and uh, so respecting uh, uh, the place this unique planet in that solar system. There are billions of stars and most probably billions of galaxies and we don't know if there's another one. It is in danger and as Frédéric pointed out yesterday, it's the first time we have to think also about the extinction of a species. What will happen if this is a deadly virus and can't be fought? What if another one comes up? What are we doing and what recipes do we have? And we really have to change the way we conduct our lives, our business, our uh, existence on planet earth and it's a it's a very serious moment so iman really thank you howlround thanks thank for you. hosting us and uh, thea and uh, vj travis asanyang and andy at the seagull team and please do do join us and tomorrow we'll know more um, about next week's lineup i think again we will go around canada and japan and uh, and um uh, many, uh, uh, many places uh, around the world, Africa, Kenya, we will hear from. And uh, so it will be um, um, another week of, uh, of, of contributions from, from theater artists on the world and hear how they experience this time. And thank you really for listening. I know how full the days are, how much is out there. And I also hope that it's as meaningful uh, to all of you who are listening. This is as for me to be part of this and of course for Iman to know that there is a connection um, where pro work to the world and there really, really is. Thank you all, stay safe, stay tuned, wear a mask, even if our president doesn't do it, who yesterday said, or oh, will the virus will somehow go away, he hopes. It has never been as many high infections as now. He famously told people to inject themselves with disinfectant, uh, it's uh, scandalous. It's uh, He has been called a mass murderer even on this program because he will have many dead people on his, conscious and um, it is shocking. It's like in the tales and spider women, the Native American company that they feel we are in a creational myth. We have a mad king, a mad ruler of theirs, the plague in the country, everything has stopped and there have to be new energy, new, that Eugenio Barba talked about the energy, there have to be new solutions. And if there ever is a time for us in our lives, for this planet, it's now and we have to understand that this is a very, very serious moments. Thank you all. Stay safe, stay tuned, and I hope to see you all next week. Iman, uh, thanks for staying up. And I'm sorry it got so dark uh, all of a sudden. And uh, <laughs> and almost the dark things you talked about, you know, were represented in that moment, but light came back on and that